Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com and welcome to another episode of the Kenneth Wells Stationary Engine Build. Where we last left off, um, we had engine components sheet 4 to do, right? And this is the piston, the connecting rod, and the big end, and of course there's a the nut. Um, so I went ahead and I've made the nut, I've made plenty of those, but if you're curious, I've uh, simply taken a um, quarter inch across flat hex bar, uh, drilled that number 38, tapped at 540, sliced them off at about an eighth inch thick, and then that's what I'm using for nuts. And recall that I wanted to make a couple for the back of the uh, engine too, so those are done. And then of course I have the nut for the big end, so we don't have to worry about that. And additionally, uh, there's a 70 millimeter long piece of eighth inch uh, rod. I went ahead and cut that off. It's going to get tapered on one end to be pressed into the piston and then threaded on the other end later uh, after it's trimmed to length to go on to the big end. So really the only two uh, components that we need to think about right now are uh, the piston and the big end. So I'll uh, set the I'll set. The, I got some three eighths uh, rod here, and this is a, a, a this is three eighths rim uh, reamed cylinder. So really, I think all I need to do is polish this, cut the oil groove, and drill the holes, and I should be good. So let's uh, get set up over at the lathe, and let's get started. Okay. Well, I want to give you a heads up. Um, the position you have tonight is because I broke the. Uh, indicator holder or the holder that I use to hold my camera on the magnetic indicator stand and I need to make a new piece and I can do that but for now I'm just going to stick you here to the toward the left side of the uh, headstock now you are in my way but hopefully you know you can tolerate me and I can tolerate you and we'll make it through this together okay so this is a 3 8 brass bar. It's been uh, faced, okay, it's in the sharp edge broken off. And if we look at the drawings, we see that uh, its final length will be 22, okay. There's a section in the middle, about six millimeters wide, right, about a quarter inch wide uh, with a recess in it. And, I'm not seeing anywhere where it says how deep to make the recess, so I imagine this is just to hold a little oil. Um, so I'll do that first. I'm just going to do that with the parting off tool, and uh, I'll get it set in place, and then I'll bring you in, and we'll we'll do it. Okay, so I have the groove, six millimeter groove here that I want to cut into the uh, into the piston, and I want to cut that about uh, about sixty thou deep. So what I'll do is I'll come up and just touch it. I'll zero my uh, cross dial and then go in 60 thou. So let's get started. All right, so I've just touched there. Okay, I have the uh, collar zeroed and I'm going to go in 60 thou. Okay, so I'm just going to come over and I'm going to whittle this out. Okay, now maybe that's too much, maybe not. If it is, I'll just uh, remake the uh, piston. Okay, so um, now what I want to do is just polish this down a little bit uh, for a good, uh, good fit in the uh, cylinder. So I have some 400 grit paper here. We're going to go with that, put a little oil on here. See what we can get going. Okay, let's wipe that off and see what that does. All right. All 
All right, I think with a little oil, that's going to be just right. Like I said, if not, I'll remake it. You know how that goes. Okay, so I'm going to uh, back this out here and get the uh, drills out and get ready, and we'll drill this out, and we'll take a look at the plan. So let, let me get those. Okay, so we have the groove cut in there, and uh, so now we're going to drill it. Uh, number 31 for 14 millimeters deep and then we're going to counterboard eighth inch for eight millimeters deep so uh, now I don't have um, a digital readout or any sort of readout on my uh, quill tailstock quill other than the markings on the thing so I'm doing it I know very amateurish but I will be um, you know I've just marked the place on the drill so let's get this going Alright, it's number 31. This is the eighth inch. Okay, so the piston has been drilled and counterbored. So really the only thing left to do is uh, part it off. So I'll measure back uh, 22 millimeters and part the piston off and then I'll bring you back in over at the bench. Okay, so I have the connecting rod here, and uh, you see that I've just sort of filed that down to a bevel there. And, of course, here's the piston. It's, let's see if I can get this to focus. Okay, it's drilled and counterboard, and it's got the relief, and it's imparted to length. Now, last time, when I pressed the crankshaft into the uh, flywheel, I use the press. This time I'm, I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to try doing a little trick that Emma done and see if I can uh, do this on my drill press. So let me get over the drill press and let's see if this happens. I'll clean these up. I'll get you set up over there and let's see if that works. And if it doesn't, and if it doesn't hold at all, I'll just, I got some Loctite. I got some Loctite here that I'll uh, glue it in with. So let me get you over to the drill press. Okay, so I'm over at the drill press. And I've got the connecting rod into the uh, chuck here. Let's just make sure it's good and snug. It is. And then uh, here's the piston. And then I've just got this uh, piece of steel here to press against. And hopefully I can do this without getting my hand in the way. And apparently I can't. Okay, so I want right, to see what happens here. Okay. I felt it slide. Now I don't know if it slid in the chuck jaws or if it slid in or if I felt it slide inside of the piston, but that feels pretty attached. So I would say the piston and the rod are good. And uh, so the next thing I need to do is make the big end. So let me get the, uh, I have some quarter inch brass square stock that I'm going to make that out of. Let me get that uh, centered up in the four jaw chuck and uh, get back with you. Okay, so I've got my quarter inch square bar in the uh, four jaw chuck. And uh, before I put it in there, I, uh, well, I faced it off nice and clean and then took it, uh, set my height gauge to an eighth inch and scribed it uh, along the face in the center and give it a little center pop. I got this little bar stuck into. So I got it pretty close. It's within it's within a, a half bow, which I think would probably be more than enough for uh, for this little project. And uh, so, all right. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to drill this uh, with a number 38 drill, at, which is tapping size for 540. And I want to drill that in about a quarter inch deep. And then I'm just going to stop because it's just a placeholder for me, so I can come back and then and uh, drill through to the uh, crank pen hole and break through and then I'll tap it all. So let me get the drill in there and I'll bring you right back. Okay, that's about a quarter inch. Now, I'm gonna take it out of the uh, chuck and I'm going to mark it 
and cut it off and then I'll face it to length. So let me do that and I'll bring you back. Okay, so here I have the, uh, the big end. Remember I drilled about a quarter inch in with a number 38 that will be tapped 540. Uh, and I will come back and finish drilling that hole to break through with the hole that I want to put here. So if we look at the drawing, we see that the uh, crank pin hole is uh, three millimeters from, um, from the end of the rod and it's an eighth inch hole. So I uh, went an eighth inch up and uh, made a cross here and made a center punch. Now I'll take this over to the drill press and put it in the vise and drill that an eighth inch through. So uh, I'll do that and then I'll bring you right back. Okay, I have drilled that through and I went ahead and tapped that. So now I'm going to put this in the vise and I'm just going to shape this round. You know, I'm not going to get pandemic about it. I'm just, just going to round it off with the file. And um, after that, we'll, uh, we'll put it in, piston in the cylinder. And we'll come over here and we'll get an idea about how long we need to adjust the uh, connecting rod to. So let me file this up and I'll come back in and we'll file this down or we'll mark it and and go from there so we'll see you in just a second okay so I have the big end just just filed up a little bit to shape if I really wanted this round I would have made a filing button or something but I think this would be just fine all right so what I need to do now is determine the length of the um, connecting rod right now it's way too long so what I'll do is recall that I drilled this hole into the cylinder with the number 53. I'm just going to stick the number 53 drill in there, right? Which would allow me to um, stick the piston in there up to the drill. Okay, so now the piston is touching up against the drill. And I can put the big end on the pin, okay, and then at its highest position. tell you what I want to do. You know, we want to cut it off somewhere in here maybe. So I'm going to mark this with some blue. Okay, so I have the piston up against the needle. I mean <laughs> the drill, right? So it's, it's at its max travel up with the uh, crank as far up as it'll go and I'm just going to select about right there to cut. So I want to cut the uh, I want to connect uh, cut the uh, connecting rod off there and then I'm going to thread a length of it up enough so that I can you know make the adjustment and get the nut on and go from there. So let me uh, cut this and thread it and I'll bring you right back. Okay, to save a lot of time piddling around on the camera, what I've done was I've taken the piston rod, you know, I cut it off and I threaded it, I, I screwed it into the big end, and I kept putting it in the cylinder and then attaching the cylinder and um, the big end to the uh, crank pin. I still need to trim that and okay until when I stuck my drill in this hole that I would clear the drill but just just shy of bumping it so that's how that's how I determine um, that's how I determine where to attach the um, um, or how far to screw the uh, connecting rod into the big end. Okay, so now that that's done, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to put some marking blue on here, in this case Sharpie. Just like that. i put this back together.
Okay, now I need to mark the inlet and in, uh, the uh, air in and the uh, exhaust port. So the way to do that is I want to set, let me see if I can zoom out here just a little bit. I want to set the crank to 90 degrees to, I'll set it to 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Just like that. So we'll start with this one here. So I've got the crank set at 3 o'clock. I'm just going to take my drill, poke it through here, and hopefully that will make a mark. And then we're going to come over here to 9 o'clock. It's about right there. And mark the port. Alright, let's see if that took. Okay, so there I marked the intake and exhaust ports for the block. I'm going to take that over to the drill press and drill them out with this uh, bit right here. And then uh, I'll bring you right back. Okay, so I have the two holes drilled, one and a half millimeter. Uh, if you recall back from the um, pivot plate, that it gave the dimensions. I just didn't know the spacing without having the uh, cylinder put together. And then the back is counterboard and eighth inch. And here's a piece of the ASIN. This will be the uh, exhaust pipe. And uh, you can see that slides right in there. Okay, so I'm going to put the uh, engine together real quick. Um, just in a nutshell, this is going to go like this here. We'll get the uh, two, two little brass nuts that I made. Like that. I hope I had it in frame, huh? Okay, and then the, uh, of course, the piston rod uh, cylinder assembly goes there and the spring. So let me put that uh, together and put a little oil on it uh, so I'm not trying to reach around the camera and I'll bring you right back. Okay, well, the engine's all together and my fingers are quite oily, but it seems to be fairly smooth. Um, but you know what? I don't have any real way, real way of getting in the air in there, but I do have an air nozzle, and uh, I don't know. Let's see if we can get it to run. All right, so let's see if we can get it to run at all. You know, my hands are going to be in the way there. I'm just going to try poking a little air in here, see what happens. I don't have any real way of, let's see, if I hold it like that, can you see that? Oh, might help with, all right. Yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a real way of getting any air in there. Let's see. Looks like it runs. Okay, well, hey, that uh, at least tells me that the uh, thing will run. Like I said, uh, without having a, a good way of getting air in there, um, probably what I, um, well, anyway, it's neither here nor there, and plus, you know, I don't have this soldered up yet. So what do I need to do from here? Um, well, a little bit yet. I need to I need to drill an oil hole and countersink it here. The engine 
will have to be the crank will have to be trimmed so that the engine can be bolted down um, but before I can do any of that I need to pressure test the boiler and I need to make a uh, safety release valve so really um, other than maybe drilling this oil hole in the uh, engine frame um, I really can't do anything right now until uh, I have a way of pressure testing the uh, the boiler so I think probably what I'm going to do now is stop on the Kenneth Wells and um, I need a hand pump and in that book uh, LBC's uh, Titch engine that I made this little uh, spot drill or, or pin drill uh, he's got some instructions there on how to build a, uh, a hand water pump you know a hand pump to test the boiler so that's uh, probably what I'm going to do next and also in that book is how to make a safety relief valve I have all the materials for that so the uh, Kenneth Wells will go in the box for now and then and we'll come back to it when we have a way of uh, testing the boiler so hey I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me while during this engine build I'm pretty pleased you know that uh, it sort of worked on the first first go um, I still have to solder this hole up and uh, a little bit of odd and end work but I'll just do that uh, uh, when nobody's looking um, but hey uh, guys uh, and gals I appreciate uh, you guys hanging out with me while we while I've been building this I want to thank Emma Ritson um, from Spare Room Machine Shop um, for the casting that she sent for this engine and uh, the help and support uh, she's been wonderful and if you guys have not checked her out please check her out I'll uh, put a link right up here to her channel alright so uh, hey other than that have a blessed day